What's good? I'm just going to do my top five R&B albums of 2014. It's not going to take that long. It's only five joints. Um, basically, I heard all these albums, thought that was incredible. I think I purchased maybe two out of the five. So let's get into it. Number five goes to Keisha Cole, Point of No Return. Um, that one song on there is what got me interested in her album. Uh next time something like i won't get my heart away or something like that but i heard it but it just seemed like she was mopey and depressed and all this type of shit you know i didn't get the same energy in the album that i got in interviews and a lot of people seem to like this album but keisha cole to me her first two albums was classic but i mean point of no return is just her way of saying you know i'm basically giving up on that situation and moving forward and trying to progress with her life you dig what i'm saying so still shout out to her number four tiana taylor was seven based on that she been supposed to be signed since she was 16 with pharrell and everything she did with kanye and people was expecting this album we never thought we'd see the her album come to you know formation you know like she'll never drop it and great album i have to say you know kanye definitely knew what he was doing with um, her and signing her, but I just feel like it didn't have as much promotion. I mean, you look now, nobody's talking about it, but she definitely can sing. She definitely got talent, and I just feel like she needs a bigger platform for her talent to really be showcased because she is great vocally. And she released a mixtape, um, Misunderstanding of Tiana Taylor, or something like that, similar to the Lauren Hill title. That was underrated as hell as well, but she definitely came and showed and proved, and she dropped a great project. Number three, K. Michelle, Anybody Wanna Buy a Heart. That album is just phenomenal, period. And based on the whole album, is about her relationship with Idris Elba. So to take a relationship and put it in your music, but it's not just about sad type music. She did country and she did other type of genres of music in one album. And she definitely came into her own, you know, with the TV show that linked that with the album release date. And just showing a different side of her. You know, I think she came a long way from being the ghetto ass, trash talking female that everybody liked to bash. You definitely see a different side of her. You know, she's a great mother. She understands the business. She keeps everything in line. I mean, she got a couple sick, insignificant people in her circle, but still at the end of the day, she showed a different side of her. And that's what I could respect about her. And this album was definitely dope. Um, because she never even thought that she would have one album and to be working on a, another album that's in stores now she already gearing up for the third i think is a great look you know so shout out to k michelle she definitely um put out a great body of work and she really don't take no bullshit and you gotta commend her for that number two would be chris brown with x this album was supposed to be out so long ago you know we didn't got singles and singles and singles but definitely it finally came out and a lot of people say it was good a lot of people say it was bad i just feel like it was what it was you know he has songs on there you can tell that it was dated but you know he still put out an album a project to where it seemed like it was rushed and it wasn't finished but at least he got something out and some of the songs on there were actually good you know i will say that even i bought it fine china is my favorite song um and he had a couple other joints on there that was dope as well. But I just feel like it's, I think the title got people thrown off. Like, why is it called X? It's because he's been in the game for 10 years. You know, because if you look at the cover, it looks like a boycott of Chris Brown. You know how they had a circle and then an X with the picture in the frame of it. So at the end of the day, you know, he put out what he put out. You know, he did his thing. He had some number one hits. He had some success. He's been in the media for more fuckery than the music and I think that's what he need to get away from is the drama and the bullshit and get back to doing what he do with his music because this album was cool but it's nothing like your first couple projects in my personal opinion but still it was a great piece of work and I just feel like he need to get back to the plateau of the success he used to have before all the fuckery got into his life um moving on to number one of course y'all should already know who that is G Naiko was sold out that album was fucking phenomenal it was really nothing else that could compare to that as far as r&b goes you know what i mean it was just gonna be her album on this my number one album of r&b for 2014 but a lot of these other albums was great as well but the ep she put out last year that was more of hip-hop and then the album is more soulful and more harmonizing and she did her thing like i was amazed like wow you could listen to that album all the way through and you definitely get 
to feel like you know who Gina Eco is. You know what I'm saying? So that's where she feels like with her interviews, if you watch, she, she gives you her life. And she definitely doesn't want to put out nothing unless it's basically something really going on in her life where she wants to share it. And she says she has a lot more stories to tell, even from her debut mixtape. You know, that somebody had put me on to her mixtape. And she's done, she's been around for a while. She's done songs with Drake. You know, she's, she's, um, she has a baby with Marianne's little brother. So she's been around the industry for like damn near 14 years. But it's just now she's getting her claim to fame. And I definitely feel like R&B is her lane and she definitely going to thrive. And I'm definitely looking forward to the um, second project. Hopefully she drops something in the middle of next year. But that's my top five R&B albums of 2014. Let me know which albums you like. Did you like any on my list? What did you think of my top 10 pop albums? Yeah, I'm out.